Hey, Stargazers. Welcome back. My name is Nick. I'm a theaters manager at the Adler Planetarium, and you're watching Skywatch Weekly. Before we dive into this week's episode, I'd like to take a moment to say thank you. During this season of giving, the Adler Planetarium is looking to raise $50,000 by the end of the year to support our online programs. Special thanks go out to two shining stars who helped us get closer to our goal this week, Thomas Neal and Mark Lovejeff. Thank you. You're helping us connect more people to the universe and to one another. If you're interested in donating and want to get a shout out in a future episode, click the link at the end of this video. So, did you catch the great conjunction? Here in Chicago, we were unfortunately clouded out on the night of, but I was able to get out on the evenings leading up to it to get some images. Now keep in mind, this is the image I got about a week out from Jupiter and Saturn being at their closest. And here is an image I was able to get last Friday. They were getting quite close and the view through a telescope was already breathtaking. You can spot the rings of Saturn and on Jupiter, the great red spot happened to be facing our way. And here is the image I was able to capture on Sunday, less than 24 hours from closest conjunction. Because the skies were considerably clearer, I was able to capture a lot more detail, especially in the atmosphere of Jupiter. Sure, it would have been great to see the view on Monday, but as I suspected, the weather didn't cooperate. But I did follow my own advice from last week's video, and I got out there every clear evening I had to catch a glimpse. So, did you see it? We'd love to hear about it. Let us know in the comments. Now, whether you saw it or not, the fun isn't over yet. As I noted in last week's episode, the amazing view of two giant planets in one eyepiece view will continue for a little while longer. Depending on how wide a field your eyepiece shows, you've got another week or so to catch that historic view through a telescope. Saturn and Jupiter are lower and lower in the sky at sunset though, so try to catch them as early as possible in the southwest. Well, what a long, strange year it has been. Certainly not what anyone expected. But as we bid a hearty farewell to 2020, I'd like to look back at the year in the sky and remember some of the truly amazing things that we've seen up there, and also look forward to what's coming up in the new year. So 2020 really ended up being the story of planets in our night sky. Jupiter and Saturn, of course, had their close conjunction earlier this week, but that story really began over the summer when both were up all night, shining brightly at opposition in July. You might recall, opposition is when planets are opposite the sun in the sky. So they're up all night long and at their brightest and best through a telescope right around opposition. So you can look forward in 2021 to Jupiter and Saturn making a similar summertime appearance with oppositions in August. One thing will be different. You might have grown accustomed to Jupiter being on the right and Saturn on the left. Well, Jupiter has now passed Saturn. So next summer, look for Saturn on the right from mid-northern latitudes. Our other planetary headline from 2020 was Mars, which had a fantastic appearance in the evening sky during its closest approach in October. The red planet will continue to hang around for the first half of 2021 in the evening sky. It'll be dimmer and setting earlier, but still shining with that reddish, orangish glow. The big news about Mars for 2021 will be the arrival of several spacecraft at the planet in February. NASA's Mars 2020 mission is scheduled to arrive and land on Mars on February 18th. You might recall it launched back in late July, and it's been Mars-bound ever since. There are two other Mars-bound spacecraft with arrivals in February, an orbiter from the United Arab Emirates and an orbiter-lander-rover combination from China. Now, because the Chinese spacecraft will first go into Martian orbit, a landing date hasn't yet been chosen, but will likely be in the spring. NASA's Mars 2020 mission includes the Perseverance rover, similar in design to the Curiosity rover, which has been operating on Mars since 2011. Along with the rover is Ingenuity, a helicopter drone that'll be making short flights to scout driving routes and points of interest for Perseverance. It'll also serve as a prototype for potential future autonomous aircraft on Mars. So keep an ear to the ground this winter as the Adler Planetarium will have plenty of coverage of the Perseverance landing in February. Well, now we come to my absolute favorite thing in the sky for 2020. That has to be Comet Neowise, which unexpectedly graced our skies for a few brief weeks this summer. 
It's hard to beat a Naked Eye comet on a list of favorites, and this one is no exception. Not since Comet Hale-Bopp in 1997 has the Northern Hemisphere seen an easily Naked Eye comet even from large cities like Chicago. Through binoculars or long exposure photographs, its tail stretched across the stars of Ursa Major, the Great Bear. Comets are notoriously hard to predict, so it's hard to tell when we might get another glimpse of a comet like this. But I was certainly glad to be able to get out and see it and photograph it on several occasions this summer, and I hope you were able to as well. Well, 2020 had a bright comet, but it was without a partial or total lunar eclipse. Several penumbral eclipses occurred, but as noted in the episode on November 25th, these are pretty underwhelming eclipses. They don't involve any obvious shadow on the face of the moon. Well, that lunar eclipse drought ends in 2021. In May and November, there will be lunar eclipses. The one on May 26th will be barely visible in Chicago, but areas farther west will enjoy a partial eclipse or even a fully eclipsed moon before it sets at dawn on the 26th. November 19th's partial eclipse will be visible easily from North America, but the timing might leave something to be desired. The eclipse will be at maximum around 3 a.m. here in Chicago, but it promises to be memorable, with almost the entire moon entering the darkest part of Earth's shadow. The part most deeply shadowed will appear orange or red, while a thin sliver of lunar disk will remain brightly lit by the sun. The Chicago area and regions east and north will also have a chance to see a partial solar eclipse, although briefly. On the morning of June 10th, the sun will be partially eclipsed at sunrise in Chicago, but this will only last for about 30 minutes after sunrise. This will require safe solar glasses to view. Never look at the sun without proper eye protection. Areas in Ontario and Quebec will experience an annular solar eclipse, where the moon doesn't quite cover the entire sun, so a ring of sun will remain visible around the moon. So no totality will be visible for this eclipse, but these can be extremely beautiful, as long as you're wearing the right eye protection. Well, I hope as the year draws to a close, you have a chance to get some rest, hopefully get out and see the sky as well. My challenge for you over the next few weeks is to get outside and enjoy the celestial sights. We'll be back with lots of great content in the new year. But until then, make sure to look up and see what you can see from where you are. Well, that's what we have for you this week, and that'll be a wrap for 2020. We'll be back in January, though. So until then, make sure you've subscribed to the Adler Planetarium's YouTube channel, and also follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Thanks, as always, for watching, and we'll see you in a few weeks.